It's a dog tail. <laughs> can we move out here so that people can see more than your tail? Come here, dude. I'm going to show people some of the stuff you can do. I have a pocket full of treats with your name written on them. Come here, dude. Rufus. Come. Oh, good come. Good come. You ready? Oh, it stretches. Oh, that was a big plop. You're down now. Can you sit up? Sit. Are we not listening this morning? Oh, everybody's going to think you're a bad puppy. Hey, everybody. It's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And obviously, today I am in the greenhouse. And I am actually in the greenhouse almost every day. Sometimes more than once a day. So, what I haven't shown you is I have been making sure that the watering system is working correctly. I have pulled a few weeds. And I did fertilize the other day. Now, let me remind you about how I fertilize. I am using a solution of 20-20-20 with a booster called MicroBoost. 20-20-20 is just basically one of those nice little crystalline things you can buy. I buy mine through Haas Tools. Honestly, I, I use a combination of things. So usually when I start the, the um, pots, I will put down a good slow release organic, but sometimes that is not quite fast enough for the plants. So having a little 20-20-20 as a backup is never a bad plan. Also, the Micro Boost covers any mineral deficiencies that we might possibly have because some plants use more of some specific minerals than another. So, what's been going on? I've been harvesting kohlrabi, lots of radishes, a bunch of broccoli, and that's pretty much it for now in here. Uh, oh, and lettuce. And the spinach, I decided to harvest the entire thing and we just used that. Because that batch of spinach was getting ready to go to, to bolt. Some of our lettuce has also bolted and that has been ripped out. I can see looking at this plant here, it's starting to elongate. That means it's going to bolt too. Uh, Take a quick look at it. See how bitter it is? That's probably still edible. Some lettuce is the very second that they start to bolt, they get really yucky. Others, they can elongate quite a bit before they get yucky. Now, unfortunately, this lettuce had some damage from a thrip infestation that we had a while ago. So it doesn't look great. And I'm actually debating possibly just eliminating it. But I am going to talk about some other things I'm going to eliminate first. And that's this. This is the first thing that's going to go today. This was um, Sweet Stem. It's a new variety of broccoli that we tried this spring. We're going to try it again this fall because just because it doesn't work in the spring doesn't mean it might not work in the fall. The problem is this stuff is now tough. It has a great flavor, but it's tough and stringy. Tough, stringy broccoli is not my idea a good time. So I'm simply going to get rid of these plants and I'm going to plant something else in here. Now, in this case, I already have a dwarf tomato in here. So what I'm probably going to plant in here is actually a little bit of uh, probably some radishes because they will produce quickly and then be out of the way so that dwarf tomato can continue to spread. This particular variety of dwarf tomato will get to be about that big around and probably about that tall when it's done, you know, when it's fully mature during the middle of the summer. Now. This one here doesn't happen to have any 
uh, fruit on it right now, but it does seem to be starting to set some. The ones that are back here have already, there's a couple back there that have already set. I've got one that's the size of a large pea and one that's about uh, a little bit bigger than a dime. So, yeah. But this is the time of year when we sometimes have to make harsh decisions about what stays and what goes and what we're going to augment into the system and what we're just going to say bye and, and we'll see you in the fall. So first things first, these broccoli have to go. I don't want to mess up the tomatoes, so I have to be a little careful here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to the side and I'll take the rest of the dirt off of them later. Now these things that are growing underneath here are not weeds. Well, they can be sort of like weeds. They're uh, husk cherries. And husk cherries is something that we really love, but they're incredibly attractive to bugs, particularly cucumber beetles, uh, sometimes aphids, but particularly cucumber beetles. So we have debated, these were self-seeded, we were debated whether we will allow them to be here. So far, we have had only one little tiny outbreak, which I caught immediately, of cucumber beetles. And I sprayed, and that seemed to have controlled it. We'll see. I would love to have some husk cherries. They're delicious. They're also called ground cherries. And they're one of the only types of fruit that you can grow in your garden that produces the same year you plant it. So it's a, uh, an annual, and it's in the nightshade family. And it looks like a tiny tomato, but it tastes like a tiny, tropical, wonderful ball of, of flavor. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I have to be careful because, what time is it? I think my irrigation is going to go off while I'm out here, or could go off while I'm out here. So I want to be careful about um, where I stick these things. If I, if I pull off the emitters like I just did, where they're going to go because I don't want them to make a mess. So what I'm going to do here is what I've been doing before this year is interplanting. So I've got my, make sure that I haven't clogged up my emitter. One of the things I have to do this year that is really bugging me is I have to change this, this, um, tubing that is on this. It, um, this particular batch of tubing is stiffer than probably any other batch I've ever had and it is a pain in the behind. Most of the irrigation tubing, after you have it in place a little bit, it gets warm, it softens up, it drapes nicely, it stays where you want it to do. This stuff is always a freaking spring that wants to go somewhere else. So, and it's become problematic. It actually did some damage to a couple of plants because it's it sprung out of the uh, pots. No, <laughs> I have some of the other tubing and I'm going to be replacing that. I don't think I have it out here right now. No, I have to get it out of storage, but there's a brown type of tubing that gets quite, not quite nice and limp and compliant when it gets warm. This stuff should have, within 24 hours of installing, stopped having this springing problem and it just didn't. So my only conclusion there is that since this was brand new, it had to have been a bad batch of plastic. And obviously there's no way for us to guess that when we buy something. So I've got those sweet stems out of here and now I'm going to grab some seeds. Let's see, these are 25 days and these are 23 days. Oh, okay. So what I'm gonna do in here is just plant a few radishes. You've seen me do this before. It's a great way to not waste space. This entire pot is being watered every day, but I've got one little silly plant in it. So what I'm gonna do is, do this again, brush this over nicely, add a little bit of potting soil just to make it easy to plant in.
Now you don't have to do this, but it makes it easier to have some nice fresh potting soil on time. It doesn't hurt anything. It means that the, any nutrients that are in here, and I do say the quality of potting soil, in my opinion, has diminished greatly in the last few years in many cases. Things that were totally reliable 10 years ago just aren't. And everybody's using COVID as an excuse. I think they're just jipping us. I think that they're, they're careless about the people that they have monitoring their supply, their supply chain. And yeah, so I'm not much into uh, conspiracy theories, but I am into the concept that a lot of industries will rip you off if they have the opportunity. So onward, I now have a nice little layer of potting soil on top. And I am simply going to make a little hole with my finger every place that I want a radish to be in this entire pot. And this is a nice collection of radishes. Some people will broadcast. I do not because I don't like wasting seeds. So in this case, these will all be Roxanne radishes. And I'm going to roll my fingers to get one radish seed into every spot. that I want a Roxanne radish in. <laughs> I can see that I got two in one spot there. I'm not going to try and recover him. We'll see. Generally speaking, these guys have 100% germination. So that means I will have two crowded radishes there, but I can live with that. Now the other half of this, I am going to do in Crunchy King. The nice thing about doing this is, you know, I know it's about half and half. I'm not going to worry about it. I can actually tell the difference. I discovered that uh, Roxanne is a bit more oval than Crunchy King is. So if I hand Henry two radishes, I'll say, okay, the round one is Crunchy King. And the oval one is Roxanne. Other than that, they look identical. The, Henry says they do not taste identical, but they are both, they are both very delicious. So... There we go. We have Roxanne and we have Crunchy King. And in about 20, 25 days, we'll have a whole nother batch of radishes that Henry can munch. There we go. Now the soil is nice and moist. I'm going to put this back in here carefully. <laughs> always make sure that you don't accidentally clog the emitter at the end here and I have to really nail these uh, tubes into the uh, stake because that that silly tubing is so springy so that's number one you'll notice as I wander through here I have a tendency to pick off old leaves I view that as just a tidiness thing. Uh, any old egg, insect eggs or anything else uh, that might be on those dead leaves or dying leaves, you know, they, they will go away. This, this container here will be cycled out today. Now this is another type of um, broccoli. And I probably shouldn't have grown it this spring because I know it likes the fall better. It likes a progressively colder environment rather than a progressively hotter environment. It is starting to produce some broccoli. I don't know how well that's going to work for us. Probably a little iffy. This guy over here is Emerald Crown, I think. Yeah, this is Emerald Crown. And we have gotten the center stalk off of him and... Uh, we have also gotten multiple side shoots. Now I have another nice little crown, uh, nice little uh, broccoli coming off of him. There's also two Shelby tomatoes and uh, a couple of husk cherries in here. I'm 
going to leave that for now. The broccoli is not quite ready to harvest. I've been debating the pak choy, and I think my debate is over. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to think about it. It's kind of like I was listening, we were listening to a guy who does uh, custom automotive work yesterday. And he said, I've been looking at this for 20 minutes. Sometimes you have to just look at things and make a decision. And sometimes you have to look at it. You can't just say, oh, yeah. There's other times when, you know, like with the sweet stem, I looked at that the other day and I said, yeah, that's, that's going to go. It, it's the first time we ever grew it. We like the flavor a lot. But uh, it's not doing super well as the temperatures get hot. So we are going to try it again this fall because some broccoli does better when the days are getting shorter and the temperatures are getting colder and others does better in the other direction. Now this is starting to elongate slightly. This is pak choy, but there's nothing wrong with it. It will be tasty and because uh, this stuff doesn't go, this particular variety does not go bitter quickly. And that's why we chose it to, to, to raise it. So I'm going to, I brought in a container. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I brought in a clean container so I could take veggies back into the house. Without getting them dirty. Because one of the nice things about growing in a greenhouse environment is that your veggies turn out very clean. So... These will hold for at least a week in the, in the uh, fridge, at least. And I can easily use one of them in a single pot of soup. And this, that pot of soup is usually mm, two days, two meals. I shouldn't say that, two days, two meals. So, yeah, it's a very nice. My King Choi, it's from... Um, and it's spelled M-E-I-Q-I-N-G-C-H-O-Y. That's from Johnny Select Seeds in Maine. I don't know if anybody else sells it or not. You know, I get mine from Johnny's. And we have for a number of years. We tried it based on the descriptions. It can be used as a um, baby pak choy or as an adult. And we like that. Because that means if we, you know, it just, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the, the form of growth that we like. We like the fact that it has a lot of leaves and a decent quantity of stem. Some pak choy is mostly stem with just a tiny bit of leaf. Or a lazy one. Sit. You love treats. You'll do anything for treats. Okay, let me make sure. Wolfus. Wolfus, come here. Let me make sure that we're actually showing things. There we go. Okay. Doesn't matter if my head's chopped off, but it does matter if your head's chopped off. Come here. Move it. Sit. Okay. What do you think? Can you shake? <gasps> Good shake. 